Hello, <clears throat> thank you for joining this video. I'm going to show you today how to download NVMS 7000 software for your Mac or your PC. So first thing we have to do obviously is download the NVMS 7000 software. So we're gonna open up a web browser. Simply type in NVMS 7000. And we're gonna download it from this site right here. So we'll hit LTS downloads and then we're gonna to go to Windows or Mac, whichever one you have. We'll hit Windows and it's gonna go ahead and start downloading the zip file. And when it's down, we'll go ahead and open it and start going through the process of installing software. This is a pretty large file, so be patient um, installing this. Looks like it's done, so we're going to show in folder. And we'll double click on the NVMS 7000 software, double click on the application, and it should start running the software. I'm going to go ahead and pause because this may take a while. Oh, never mind. We'll hit yes. Next. We just want the client. Next. We want to install WinCap. Next. It's going to tell me that I already have WinCap, but if you don't, it'll take you through the process. I agree. Install. I'm going to ignore because I've already got it. And I'm going to hit finish. That's the wind cap. Now we're going to start installing the software. So we're going to hit install and this will take a while. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. All right. So it has finished and um, it has this checked by default. Created a, a shortcut. Hit next. Finish. I'll go ahead and close this window and let's see where to put it right here. So we're going to double click to open it up, hit yes. <clears throat> and again, this is a very large program. If you have multiple cameras, it is uh, highly suggested that you have a newer PC with a fast processor. Uh, to run this, um, to have a good user experience, uh, just because it is such a large program, once you start putting a bunch of cameras on there, um, a computer with a, a slower, older graphics card and processor is not going to be able to handle all this information coming through. So, super user, what we're going to do is um, I always just make it something simple. Now, the key here is to keep you auto logged in. You don't have to do that, but by doing that, you don't have to remember this password and username you just put in. If this is a shared computer, then obviously you do not want to check that. I'm going to go ahead and hit register. All right, and we're going to allow access to the firewall. My computer's acting really slow for some reason, so I apologize. All right, so it's going to bring us into the setup wizard. So what we can do is go right up here to add device. I'm going to call this home. Here you're going to put in your DDNS. I gave you a DDNS um, that you should have. It should be some some words with .dvrlist.com. Um, so this is where you'll put that, or you'll put your external IP address or your internal IP address, whichever one I've told you to do. Um, for this, I'm just going to put in my internal and port is going to be whatever port I told you, 8000 is default unless I told you different. Um, and then you're going to put in your username and your password and we're going to hit add. Uh, 
All right, so it's green over here. If all these are green, this doesn't have to be green, but most of these should be green. That means that it's, it's connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this wizard. Make this bigger for you. All right, so in control panel, this is basically where all your apps are. So um, you have main view. If you go to main view, um, basically what you have to do is just uh, take this home. You can drag and drop and it will populate all of your cameras for you. All right, now you also have uh, different views over here. So you can hit this and you have all these different views, however you wanna set it up. And then if you wanna change these pictures, you just drag and drop and it will switch the images uh, from, I do it, drag and drop, it'll switch them over here. All right, um, now from here, you can also right click on this and you can synchronize the camera. So especially if you're doing playback, it'll synchronize all the times for you. And then you also have remote configuration. Um, that's where we can get in and uh, do different settings for the DVR. You can do it from here, or you can right click on uh, any picture in here. And then you can also go to, uh, where to go? Remote configuration right here. So let's go ahead and just click on that because this is where a lot of your settings are and things that you might wanna mess with, adding users and, and, and things like that. So we'll click on that. Um, you have your time settings. You can go in here. If your time's not set right for whatever reason, you go in here and mess with your time. Um, users, this is where you can add users. So let's just add a test one for right now. So we'll just call this one an operator. You can do operator or guess. We'll call the username uh, test one. Password will make um, test one, two, three, four, five. Test one, two, three, four, five. Now, after that, you can go down here and give permissions. So if you didn't want them to have local permissions to do something or remote permissions to do something, you can click on whatever you want. So you can go through each one of these and um, you know say what you want them to be able to do um, depending on the person. Um, so there's another feature in here where you can, um, actually, um, remote live view. So if we click that, we can go in here and we can change each one of these. Um, so if we want them to only view just a certain amount of cameras, you know, if this is a daycare or work facility and you only want them to view their area and not other areas, you can go in here and you can tell them which cameras they can and can't see two-way audio, um, you also have your regular audio if you don't want them to have control of that, and then you'd simply hit save. And then you can add as many users as, as you want. Um, so let's see if there's anything else in here that you might need. Image, you can go in here and set your different frame rates, uh, your mainstream and all this stuff. I probably already set all this stuff up for you so you really don't have to worry about that too much image if you thought something was too dark um, and you want to change the contrast or whatever you can go in here and mess with this as well um, channel zero don't worry about that uh, i think that's most of what you'd want to see in there um, so what i'm going to do is go ahead and stop this main view real quick and we'll go back into the control panel now you have this function in here called emaps and what you can do is you can add a map and what I do um, is I basically take a Google shot, uh, the top of the house or business or whatever it is, or if you have blue, uh, blueprints, you can upload them. So you just hit on that and then you go find the picture that you did and then you can upload it and you can actually drag and drop camera placements around the building, especially if you have a very large facility, you can go in there and you can drag and drop where these cameras are and name them whatever you want. That way it's easier to find a camera when you're trying to follow someone. Go back in here, um, remote playback. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here, select our from and to, we'll just say the 24th. These are your times, if you know the time, hit okay. And then I'm gonna simply drag and drop the camera over here. And it's gonna start playing. Um, so you have your times over here that you can just start playing hit that little play button right there and it'll play from that time. But these down here, these are your little tick marks and you just drag over here and then you come down here and you double click to where you want 
and it will hop to the next movement that happened. Um, and how I set these up, it records five seconds before, 30 seconds after the movement. So as you can see, that car is going by. Um, I can double click the image, it'll make it bigger. Um, from here, I can right click. I can uh, start recording. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna start recording and then I'd stop recording and then it will save it to a place. Um, and I'll show you how to tell it where to save. Otherwise, it's just gonna be defaulted. Um, also, if you wanted to pause fast, you can slow it down, speed it up. Um, digital zoom is kind of like a pinch to zoom. So we just simply make a box and it zooms in, zooms out, however you want to do it. All right, and then we have to right click again, close digital zoom. Um, you can also capture. So if you just want to take a, a shot of what you've seen, you can capture it and we'll save it. Um, and uh, enable audio. This one doesn't have audio, but if you did have audio on your camera, you would enable audio so you'd be able to hear what's going on as well. Um, let's do a VAC search. This thing's pretty cool. Um, so what you do, um, this is basically going to filter out if you're just trying to uh, get a specific area. So let's say I hit this, I hit this button right up here and I can draw my area and then I can set my sensitivity and then I'll do a search and it's going to populate every time that it picked up movement in this area and then it will uh, come over here and let me know um, where all those movements were and what times. So as you can see, these are the movements that I had in that area. Um, so I can go through these like if someone, if there was a trash bin or whatever, um, it would it would go to that area and, and show you all those. All right. So let's go ahead and close out of remote playback. I think that's it for that. We'll stop remote playback. All right. Um, I want to go into device management real quick. And how I got there, you just go up to control panel and then you go down to device management. All right. And then I'm going to go over here to group. And right now these are named camera one, camera two, and so on. So if I just hit this and then modify, it'll show me the snapshot of what that picture is. And then I can name this, say, front door. And then hit OK. So now when I come back into main view, you'll see my front door is right here. They are named on the screen because that's through the DVR, but you have to do this for each uh, machine that has this on there and I'll show you a way also to um, be able to save all the settings that you have once you set this up so if multiple people are going to have this in, in your corporation um, you don't have to go through and set up all these things for them so um, I'll show you that now actually before I forget um, so where's export so you would export system configuration you would find your thumb drive probably um, and then you would just basically name it and it would save all your configurations that you've, you've done on this and then you can take it to the next machine and then you would go up here and uh, import configuration it would import all the stuff your maps all your settings that you have on there it would import it for you so it'll save you a lot of time if you're trying to do this for multiple people all right um, what else we got here that's it for device management. Oh, well, I lied. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do, if you have uh, multiple DVRs um, and you wanna view all your stuff at once, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here. No, I'm sorry. Well, here we'll put test. Import. And then if you had another DVR, it'd be down here with all the other pictures. So you can go through here and you can select all the pictures that you want and then hit import. Um, and then you'd have multiple pages if you had three or four or five DVRs or whatever. Um, you could import all the pictures over there and then they would be all or all shops or all homes or whatever you have it. And then you could just drag and drop on the main view. Um, close this. You could just drag and drop. You'd have something over here called all. Um, and then you would just drag and drop and put it over here. So there's my test. So I would just drag and drop and all my stuff would appear for me. All right. Now these little things appearing down here, you can just hover over and tell you what it is, but it's a capture. So if you're watching this live and you see something, you wanted to capture it, that is going to take a screenshot. 
that is going to start recording, which this is recording anyways if it sees movement. Um, and then you also have switched to instant playback, which is pretty cool. So if I hit that, I've seen something out of the corner of my eye. I said, you know what, playback a minute ago. And this is from one minute ago, and it's going to start uh, playing back. And if you want to go back further, all you do is just go back here. Um, and then you can stop or pause, um, replay, and then, of course, start recording. So we'll just uh, stop that. And then if I wanted to bring that back over there, I can just drag and drop these anywhere I want. All right. Um, now, if you have multiple screens, or I'm sorry, multiple systems, or if you have multiple screens, you have a video wall or whatever, you can do up to four different screens. So if I said open up auxiliary screen, now I have two screens. I have multiple screens on here, so I can't do it, but, um, well, you wouldn't be able to see it, but I can have multiple ones and I would just keep doing that. And then I can say, you know what? I want this to be here and this to be here. And then I can view it on multiple uh, screens. So, uh, and you have to, so this is basically your, um, your home screen. So you'd have to go back up here to your file, or I'm sorry, to your view, and then open up another auxiliary screen and it'll just keep going. Um, for a max of four so if you have something a larger system there's something called a video wall and that will be in another tutorial so I'm just gonna close these out for right now all right and I'll enlarge this again uh, what am I forgetting PTZ so how do we do PTZ control there's two different ways to do it so you can right click and you can go down to PTZ control which is right here and it'll give you little arrows and you can just go up, down, left, right, whichever way you want. Um, and your, uh, if you're doing it on the side of the mouse, then you can just scroll up or down and that will give you your zoom. The other way is to open up PTZ control over here. And if you have different presets, you can set your presets. You can move it all around here. You can zoom in. And it has that autofocus feature. So, so it's gonna give you a nice crisp shot. Look at that cement, isn't that pretty? All right, and so that's how you do PTZ control. So I'll close out PTZ control. And uh, I think that's it guys. Let me just uh, make sure we got everything. Um, if I forgot something, please tell me and I can always add it. But that should be it. There is something I forgot. Um, so if you go to control panel, system configuration, um, I see, I would have forgot. If you go up here to file, these are the paths that where you go to save a video clip or a picture where it's gonna save to. Um, what I like to do is just go in here and save them to video. That way I know where all my stuff is. Um, easy for me to remember. And then select folder, video, select folder and then save all right uh, everything else in here this is more for uh, the system that you're using this is not directly to the DVR okay um, also to play any recorded videos you need to download VLC player okay that is the best thing you can use to play these videos that is an mp4 um, but from what I found, uh, it is the best to play uh, your videos. Um, if I can get this to pull up, I'll show you where to go and what it looks like. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to uh, VLC Media Player. And then you would download VLC Player. I already have it, so I'm not gonna download it. Uh, but it is a free download. There is no cost to download it. So that is the best thing to play it on, whether it be your phone or anything. Um, you want to play it on VLC player. All right, guys, that's it for me. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope uh, this answered any questions that you were trying to do um, with the NVMS 7000 software for your Mac or PC. Thank you and have a good day.